how come you dropped out of high school? No. Oh, I was making poor grades and I hated school. <laughs> That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> And did you go into the Navy right at first, or did you work f some jobs? Uh, I worked at a service station for a while, uh, and uh, uh, I, my brothers, uh, two brothers had joined the Navy, and uh, I found out that they had liked it so well, I thought I'd, when I got old enough, I could go in too, and I did. So did you go in at 18 or 19? Uh, 18. And so you went off to San Diego. Yeah, down to San Diego for training, and then uh, I was uh, transferred to Hawaii then for uh, assignment. Now, were your brothers in San Diego when you were training there? Uh, they, they were aboard uh, the Arizona, and they were at sea a lot. And they did come and visit me when I was at in the training is. Now you talked about uh, trying to train for electrician school because that's what your brothers yeah, I was, were doing. Uh, see they had, both of them had gone uh, through electrical training and I thought that would be a good idea for me that when we come out of the Navy we'd set up an electrical uh, uh, program. And, uh, so you have your own business have together. have our own business and uh, I flunked electricity <laughs> 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 and then uh, they offer they, they just automatically put me in the ordnance school and see the electrical school and the ordnance school were combined in the first few weeks and then after you've got the preliminary then you separate one went to electricity and one went to the uh, armament and uh, so they figured if you couldn't fix things, you could blow them up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of it that way, but yes. Uh, so, but uh, I found out that I enjoyed, in the basics, I enjoyed the gunnery a whole lot better than the electricity. And, and so I was actually pleased that I got put in with the uh, gunnery school. So, they, so, your, so your specialty was called uh, what? What do they call your... Aviation ordnanceman. Aviation ordnanceman. Mm -hmm. And did they also call you a machine gun mechanic? Yeah, well that that was the nickname a for slang. It, yeah, machine gun mechanic because our main job was maintaining the machine guns that were being used uh, not only by the individuals but by those that were installed in the airplanes. Uh, we had some that were installed in the wings and some were installed in the cockpits and so uh, it was our job to maintain those and keep them in good shape, keep them clean, and keep them. Every time they were used, we had to take them out and clean them. And you were also trained to, to shoot them, weren't you? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We went through the, the uh, uh, begunnery school at, uh, in which we were given the permission to have practice in shooting the guns that we were taking care of. Now, in gunnery school, didn't they put uh, dummy shells every tenth shell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, was the, what was the purpose for that? And so you wouldn't shoot, shoot up a whole belt of... Uh, we See, they only gave us a slow, sh very short belt of ammunition for each uh, uh, student. And uh, they didn't want one student shoot up all of the, be all the shells and the rest of us not have anything. So we would every ninth... Uh, a shell we put in a dummy and it would quit it wouldn't fire naturally so it'd fire 10 shots and then quit yeah uh -huh. and then you'd have to what recock so have the gun to cock it to start up again start and then we could shoot another 10 now um so you get so you get stationed over at pearl harbor yes, how do you sir. feel about getting uh duty in hawaii well uh, uh had some mixed feelings about it uh, uh uh, I, uh, it wasn't what my first choice was, but I found out I liked it better than what my first choice was. I, Which was, I, what was your I first choice? I wanted to be aboard ship, you know. Oh, because <coughs> your brothers were my, aboard my ship. My brothers were aboard a battleship, and I wanted to be aboard that battleship, too. But uh, they, since I took the aviation gunnery, uh, they sent me to an aircraft uh, station. Yeah, where I was to main, maintain the 
the airplanes instead of uh, just the big guns. So you're stationed on Ford Island in Hawaii. Yes. Uh huh. And what kind of airplanes did you maintain? We had the um, J2Fs mainly. Uh, they were at, so they were an amphibious plane in which you could land in the water or on the land. And were they used for patrolling or for, uh, for yeah, bombing they, they or were, what? They were patrolling and also a practice uh, a training the pilots and so forth. So you're stationed at Fort Island and you're maintaining seaplanes, including PBY patrol bombers uh -huh. and. Um, so it's it's about ten minutes to eight o'clock on on a December morning, on 1941, and what happens? Well, uh, there was this bunch of planes flying overhead, and we we thought there were some of our carrier planes coming in from sea, so we pay much attention to them, and then they started diving on us and dropping bombs, and we knew then they weren't our friendlies, and when one of them came flying right over our hangar we could see the symbol of the rising sun under their wings and uh, realized then we were being attacked by hostile forces of the Japanese Imperial Navy. I was standing outside of the hangar and just a little way, about a hundred feet away was a high explosive magazine where our ammunition was stored and our bombs and, and I was quite sure that that would become a target so uh, my fear turned to terror and I, because uh, uh, it, that was only less than a hundred feet away. Uh, it would probably leveled our hangar. But anyway, uh, I went into the hangar. About the middle of the hangar, some big steel I beam sporting the roof, and it was sort of like an I. Uh, well, it was a big I beam enough that I could squeeze into the recesses of it, where it had steel on three sides of me, and I put that steel between me and the magazine, and and uh, waited for that. Uh, uh, place to, bur to blow up. Fortunately, there was a, even though there was a, a pilot had been assigned that as a target, he dropped his bomb in the wrong clump of trees and his bomb landed in a vacant lot and didn't, didn't do any damage but make a hole in the ground. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, fortunately, they, ne they never did hit our, our uh, uh, storage for ammunition and bombs. So you're hiding in the I-beam, and yeah. what are your buddies doing? Well, <laughs> a couple of my buddies picked up some 45 caliber pistols that had been used on watch the night before, and they went out and started shooting at these planes with these pistols now. Here I am, an aviation ordinanceman, a trained aerial gunner with excess to machine guns, and I'm hiding in an I-beam, so I began to feel so ashamed of myself. So I left my hiding place and went into the army where the machine guns were stored and some other ordnance went together. So we took our machine guns and put them in the mounts of the planes parked on the ground outside the hangar. And the uh, last one I put in was in a waist hatch of a PBY Catalina patrol bomber. And then I got behind that gun and manned it for the rest of the attack. Now and you I had, wasted a lot of bullets that moment. <laughs> now you had a little difficulty before you put the gun belts in. Didn't didn't some of those gun belts have dummy shells in them? Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. These these were uh, belts were belted up uh, for use of uh, gunnery practice, and so to keep from shooting up a whole belt in one burst, well, we ever tenth uh, shell was a dummy that it would make this, the gun stop shooting. And so I had to go through and pull all of those out and put live ones in its place before I could actually use it to shoot that back at the Japanese. So you and your buddy Aubrey are pulling dummies out as yeah. quick as you can and yeah. shoving real shells in and handing the belts to the guys who yeah. want to use them in the machine gun. Right. Uh -huh. So that kept you busy. And <laughs> yes. So you finally get all those belts fixed up. Yeah. Now, you mentioned to me that uh, these were 30 caliber machine guns. 30 caliber, yeah. And the 50 calibers, which you wish you had have had, were, were, were where were they? They were still in uh, sort of like storage. Uh, they were in boxes that had been covered and they had been coated with Cosmoline uh, to keep from rusting. And so we had to 
get those out of the boxes that first we had to get them brought over. Well, that, now you did that after the attack. Uh, uh, you didn't actually use those during the attack, the 50 calibers. No, we never, we never did get them uh, ready in time to yeah. use them. You could have used those, couldn't you have? Uh -huh. Would they have done more damage to the... Oh, yes. Uh, they had much larger shells and they had incinerator bullets that, w that if they hit the plane with an incinerator bullet, it would, the plane uh, would burst into flames. And I see. So you're shooting at them with a smaller gun, the 30 yeah, caliber. Right. Mm -hmm. so, you, you, so you finally get the gun belts all ready and they're all mm -hmm. shooting away and you grab one of the guns in this waist hatch of the PBY and you start shooting. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you shoot anything down? Uh, well, I had a part in helping to shoot it because so many people were shooting that nobody got, uh, you might say, the own loan uh, uh, credit for it. In other words, you're all shooting at the same plane. We, yeah, we were all. Well, what had happened? They had <coughs> uh, had dived into the east part of the airport and dropped their bombs and pulling out of our dive across the runway, heading right over our hangar, and uh, we had several of our guys. Then we're shooting at him, and we could see our tracer bullets penetrating his fuselage when he burst into flames. And uh, instead of crashing out in the channel, he does a little arc and dive and purposely crashes uh, on the crane deck of the USS Curtis, and that became known as the first uh, kamikaze of World War II. And uh, so, and so you're shooting. You should. You know, at least one that you guys. Altogether mm -hmm. shot yeah. down. Mm -hmm. Now, besides uh, shooting at the planes, you had time to notice that something was happening out in the water. Oh boy, yeah, just right off the shore, uh, less than a hundred feet from our uh, from our where our hangar was located, there was a little Japanese midget submarine had had come to the surface just just enough so that they could fire uh, their torpedoes at the USS Curtis, and so. They had launched one car torpedo, but they missed their target. But before they could launch a second one, the USS, uh, 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 what was it? The, the Monahan? Huh? Was it the Monahan? Yeah, the Monahan, yeah. The USS Monahan came steaming down uh, the channel to get out of the harbor, and they spotted that little submarine, and they rammed him right far to the conning tower, and then they dropped two depth charges on it, but they passed over. Well, that, Naturally, that was the end of their Nipponese naval career. Uh, but the skipper on the Monaghan had his ship going so fast to keep him blowing off his own fantail, dropping depth charges in shallow water like that. So they couldn't make the bend in the channel and run aground over on Waipio Peninsula. It took them about an hour to get off of that mud flat. Even though the attack only lasted for two hours, you stayed at your guns all day and all night. Yes, uh-huh. And in fact, later that night, some uh, of our own carrier planes tried to land on Port yes, Island. Yes, there were five of our uh, carrier planes uh, would, would try to come in and land, and we thought they were Japanese, so we began to shoot at them and, and shot some of them down. And uh, strangely enough, uh, during the during the Vietnam War, I met the men, one of the men that I, uh, that didn't get shot down. The only pilot in that group that didn't get shot down. And I had a chance to apologize to him for trying to shoot him out of the because we didn't know he was he was friendly. We thought he was an uh, enemy. Did he thank you for being a bad shot? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he, he was glad I'd, I didn't hit him, although. Uh, see, there was, there was four of their planes coming in together, and we did shoot down three of them, but his, we missed him. So you're there all day and all night, yeah. and uh, the Japanese don't come back, no. thank God. What were you thinking about? I was thinking about...